Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. What a great day. Today, we need to talk about all about this new Lamborghini replaced with the new Lamborghini Huracan. It is coming and it's around the corner and it should be here ASAP. Today, I'm going to share with you the latest news that we know about this new vehicle and the process of where the Lamborghini team is right now. I know I'm talking very fast. It's because I'm very excited to hear more about this vehicle and share what we know about it so far. Make sure to check out the spy shots all over the internet. I think they're next to the Nürburgring of the Lamborghini team testing out this new Lamborghini replacement because it is actually on the streets. It's got camouflage on it right now, and they're driving them around putting on miles. Usually, we find this a lot of the times when a brand is right around less than a year away from debuting a new product or making an announcement. It happens with every vehicle I can really find, even for Mustang with their GTD. Same goes for Corvette right now and their new Corvette ZR1. If you haven't seen the last video, or a few videos back at least, the new Corvette ZR1 is even driving around in California right now. I'm saying Corvette ZR1 because that is just the mass consensus right now. We all think it's gonna be that. By no means is it exactly the name of that model. It's just something new coming down the pipeline. I think usually when they're doing this, they're trying to break down and analyze how the vehicle is coming together in terms of cooling and also calibration settings. There are so many different things and moving elements that go towards building a vehicle. One of those is going to be tuning calibration or also a ride and handling. Those ride and handling engineers will get inside these vehicles and put on tons of miles. This one time I was actually driving on Angeles Crest Highway over next to uh, Los Angeles. It's a very nice mountain road. Many people over there who are into the car scene love going up and down those mountains because it's a good escape from the regular city life, right? I ran into a C8 Stingray before they were even out and I actually pulled up next to the driver and it was I believe a ride and handling engineer just taking the vehicle out and putting miles on it because they're trying trying to report back on how it's performing over time. When you hit this stage, obviously you're past the point of the concept phase of designing the engine components and the internals or even the interior. You're well past those stages. You are right there where the vehicle design is almost finished. You're hiding it, almost a finished product, underneath a camouflage design. We are getting close. Here's what we know so far about this new Lamborghini replacement. I want to I want to know, what do you think? Where is your mind right now? Do you want a Lamborghini Huracan or a Performante, something like that? Are you looking into this new replacement? I know that the Lamborghini Huracan has been such a successful model for the team. I think it's just as successful as the Aventador, in my opinion. The Aventador really sets the stage for the Halo Lamborghini with the screaming V12, but not everyone can afford that model. Not everyone can get into it, which means this is where the Huracan stands. It is the entry level a Lamborghini people can buy for around $250,000 to $300,000. If you look at the Lamborghini Technica, yeah, we're seeing $300,000 builds of the Huracan. It makes sense, so this is the best version of it. Yeah, and inflation has been racking up prices. I would predict it's going to be right around the mid to high 200s for this new Lamborghini replacement. Right now, speculation is surrounding the fact that it will be debuted late 2024 and first editions of them will be coming out early 2025. Also, I'd expect a coupe version first with a spider to follow soon after that. Similar to how the Revuelto has been launched. Right now, we only have seen the coupe. Is the spider coming? Probably, and if it does, well, we haven't seen one yet, and it's been a little while since it did get revealed. The biggest shift is saying goodbye to the naturally aspirated V10. By going down the route of a hybrid system, it's a really big deal, not only for the statement Lamborghini's making that they're going contemporary, but also by saying goodbye to that raging bull <laughs> V10, they have to re-engineer a new platform, a new drivetrain system to give you ultimate Lamborghini rap raspiness and noise with a high revving motor. I think they can do it. They did a great job with the Revuelto so far. Here's the glory of building this hybrid system. If you look at this new V8 engine that the team is supposedly putting in, because obviously nothing's been confirmed yet, the car's not out. Let me tell you the benefit of going down the route of a hybrid system, a plug-in hybrid. If you put in a brand new V8, let's say it even weighs less than the V10, that'll be a benefit right away. Moving on from that fact, if it's a turbocharged V8, 
you will probably get turbo lag. Other brands, just McLaren, they go down the route of utilizing the electric system down low in the RPM range for the engine to give you compensated torque and power. By doing that, it builds a linear power band similar to a naturally aspirated motor. If you get into a McLaren Artura, then let's say a McLaren 570S, you will notice how one car has more of a smooth climb, then the other one has more of an exponential just boost. Feels like a spaceship taking off out of nowhere. They're totally different. They're totally different designs. This is gonna help the Lamborghini team to condense with engine size and the entire drivetrain system, but it poses a whole new challenge of dealing with more weight because by dealing with a new hybrid motor, they're probably dealing with all new battery systems and batteries add weight. Look at any hybrid vehicle from the Corvette E-Ray all the way to the Lamborghini Revuelto, even to the Ferrari 296 GT uh, B, the McLaren Artura, they usually weigh more than their gas powered predecessors. I'm talking about the fully gas powered predecessors. The predecessor for the 296 Ferrari GTB was a Ferrari F8 Tribute that was a twin turbocharged V8 powered Ferrari. It weighs less than the 296 GTB, even though it's older. Presumably, it's going to share components with the Lamborghini Revuelto because that really pioneered the all new hybrid power plant from Lamborghini. That was the first one, right? It, we've seen so many great performance tests from that vehicle. The drives looked fantastic. And the new technology is definitely next generation, even going to the center screens. That technology would make a lot of sense going into the new uh, Huracan replacement because it's already been established and represents a new mindset of design moving forward for the Lamborghini team. Expect technology from the Revolto, not only talking about the hybrid system, but also talking about technology displays and more. This is the future for Lamborghini. If we look at the Huracan, Con and the Aventador, these vehicles, they were created and built for a long period of time. A Lamborghini just doesn't usually make brand new platforms very often. There's a huge gap in years. The Huracan came out, what was it, around 2015 or so? And then it's end of production right around 2024. It's nine years. The Aventador, same scenario. This is going to be a car we're going to see for probably the next nine years or more, depending on where Lamborghini hits with this new design. The competitor for this vehicle will likely be the McLaren Artura and then the Ferrari 296 GTB. We know the 296 GTB is faster accelerating than the McLaren Artura. It's faster on the track, I believe, too. I've not tested it, but I've watched videos. I'm going off what I saw. I would love to test it out. Stay tuned because very shortly, in a couple weeks, I'll actually be getting behind the wheel of a 296 GTB on track. I'm excited to share how it performs. I'm very excited about that video. So stay tuned. And if you want, if you want to watch it, make sure to subscribe right now and make sure to hit the notification bell so you're up to date on the videos coming out here in the channel. We don't only purchase vehicles for long-term tests and reviews, but also we test out new vehicles coming onto the market that are performance-oriented. And I can't wait to give you state-of-the-art track test coverage. You know how we do it here. I like to keep things real and show you real-world performance from a driver like myself that's been licensed and had experience in the past. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Again, I know so many friends of mine, they own Lamborghinis. They own either the SVJs, the Aventadors, the Huracans, even going back to the Gallardos. So many of you probably own them as well. So I want to ask you right now, if you're watching, what do you think? Will you still be on board with the Raging Bull brand if they say goodbye to the naturally aspirated high revving motors? I recently heard one comment that by going down the route of electrification and hybrid systems and newer, newer platforms and tech, we're saying goodbye to the rougher, more raw Lamborghinis, same can be said for any other brand, and we're getting towards more refined vehicles and more just technologically advanced vehicles. I want to use that analogy and ask you, do you agree with that? Do you think that going down the route of a hybrid Lamborghini, are they always getting more comfortable? Are they always getting more advanced with tech and screens? And are they always getting more raw, more engaging? 
I recall when the Huracan came out, a lot of really well-known journalists were talking about how it's not as raw as they want it to be. It was more refined, and later on, Lamborghini really improved on that with the later models coming out, all the way to the Technica and the STO. Initially, the LP610-4 for all-wheel drive, I think was very comfortable, and it didn't hit the same impact or desire people wanted from other Lamborghinis in the past. Finally, do you think the Lamborghini Revolto is still worth getting if the new Lamborghini Huracan replacement is over the horizon? If that new Huracan is really that close towards the end of the year, we might see that, let's say, Monterey, which would be cool. Will this be more popular than the Lamborghini Revolto? I think they'll make more of these. I just have a feeling right now, being a car buyer and car fan, we're not seeing these hybrids roll out very fast, are we? How many Ferrari 296 GTBs have you really seen delivered? It looks like the hybrid supercars have been taken longer to hit the streets than standard gas-powered equivalents. 750S McLarens are already hitting the streets. That was fast. There weren't really big issues with the car. None that I can recall off the top of my head. They are proven platforms with the gas-powered systems. Will this new Huracan be significantly delayed having new electronic technology? These are all things to keep in your mind. Same with maintenance. How will any glitches affect the car? Will it be reliable down the road? We can only find out. There is a lot of pressure right now in the car industry to go towards electrification. We need to see how everything comes together. Let me know your honest thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. And subscribe for much more great content coming out your way. I really appreciate your support. Hit the notification button to get all the video updates here on the channel. I can't wait to share my coverage of how it dries when it comes out. Hit the like button. I'll see you in the next episode.